right? So, so that's why it's apex. And the question is, why is it going up? Because it's better than everything else, you know? And if you think there's something else that's better than that, yeah, then you buy that. But I have mm. searched the world over. <laughs> I considered a thousand things. I can't find anything better. Okay, let me throw a, let me throw a thought experiment at you, and and you okay. can clarify everything you've said. I think uh, if you uh, if you follow me along here, imagine I were to paint your fence. Okay, because this, this is from John Locke. My 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 background's in philosophy. One of the greatest, most respected thinkers in history is John Locke. He influenced the founding fathers, no doubt. The guy that was a brilliant man. He says, "Look, you own your body and you own your labor." You're using the word energy. He he used the word labor. If I go and I till a land, I build on that land, I farm on it, I make it livable, I build a, you know, a, a nice little village, I own that village, we own that village, we put our time and energy in that village, and therefore it's an extension of our body and we own it. This is what he says. So for instance, if you ask me, for us, paint my fence and I paint your fence, you, you pay me $100 to paint your fence, that $100 is the accounting for my labor. I don't own that fence now, you own that fence, you, you gave me $100 that $100 represents my labor or how you put it, my energy. Now, if I were to take it in US currency versus Bitcoin, if I take $100 worth of Bitcoin or $100 worth of American currency, which one of these two will preserve my energy better and why? The, the US currency is going to lose energy anywhere from 7% to 25% a year. It's right. a fiat or the US dollar is a battery it's draining at 20% mm -hmm. a year right now. Gold is a battery draining at two or 3% a year right now. Bitcoin is a battery that doesn't drain. It's charging. It doesn't drain. In fact, it's charging. It's, it's been amping up at a hundred plus percent a year. It's deflationary. Right? And, it, and it, when I give you the money, you have the option to convert the hundred dollars into Bitcoin immediately. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You could also go the other way and convert the hundred dollars into uh, pesos. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, and if you look at the last year, if you converted the hundred dollars in the S and P, you'd be up twenty seven percent. If you bought a typical house, you'd be up twenty five percent. If you bought Bitcoin, you'd be up like four hundred percent. If you held it in dollars, you'd have a hundred dollars. But the hundred dollars wouldn't buy as much as they would have bought last year. So, so Bitcoin is a battery. I mean, you can think of these th all assets. All assets are repositories to store energy or to store money. If you want to call it money, you want to call it energy, you want to call it work, right? Um, they're all just different ways to store that energy over long periods of time. What's the worst one? Like the Venezuelan Boulevard is the worst one, right? That's awful. If you took the money and you bought electricity, pure electricity, if I give you a million dollars of electricity and you put it in the best battery, you lose 2% a month. So pure electrical energy loses 24% a year. And if you wanted to move the electricity 100 miles on a line, well, you need the line mm -hmm. and you lose 6% of it, mm -hmm. right? So you can store your, uh, your mo money in different things and they all decay. Look, you can buy sheep with it. You can buy hamburgers with it, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you can buy packaged food with it. So some things last a long time, other things don't. But here's the really big problem for us. All these other things you can buy, like let's say, you know, you're coming back to John Locke. John Locke said, you spend an entire year and you build a house for me and I pay you a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, so you take the money and you buy your own house. Well, you don't really own your own house. In, in the physical world, if you own a house or, or you own a, a herd of cattle or you earn a bunch of gold, those are all spoils of war. I can take them from you. True. Right. With violence. True. I can take your house. I can tax your house. Very true. Right. The problem with gold is I can just murder everybody and the gold's still there. <laughs> Might is right sometimes. Okay. So if you look at the history of humanity, Bitcoiners are pretty passionate. We're, you know, there's Very a lot true. of religious conviction. You see our laser <laughs> eyes on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I know. <laughs> well, here's, here's the big idea. For the first time in 10,000 years, we have invented a form of digital property, a form of property that you can truly own that is not spoils of war. Mm -hmm. You cannot seize Bitcoin with violence. And, and so 
gold is war. If you study, you know, all through history, it always ends with, you know, the Romans or the whatever sack the city, kill everybody and take the gold, right? Nobody ever burns the gold. They always take the gold. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether the people live. So I can take your gold. I can take your land. I can take your house. Um, you have a company, you know, well, the government, you know, like in Cuba, in Venezuela, they're going to expropriate your company. In Zimbabwe, you have a ranch, they take the ranch. So if you have anything in the physical domain, mm -hmm. I can take it. And if you disagree, I can still take it. And, you know, occasionally I might negotiate with you, but there's not really an incentive for anybody to negotiate. I might as well, I can either just take 10% of it by a tax or just take it all. On the other hand, if you own Bitcoin and I come to you and I say, give me all your Bitcoin and you have the private keys, you can just say no. Okay. If a hundred people in your city have Bitcoin and I go and I, I grab one of them and I put them in jail and I say, give me your private keys. Well, maybe after 60 or 90 days of like roughing you up, you might give me the keys, but the other 99 people in the city they're going to send their Bitcoin somewhere else or put it, you know, send it or transfer it or get it out of the country. And so violence is not going to get you more than 0.5% of the asset. And if, if, we, um, if we invaded a country, I could take mm -hmm, the oil mm -hmm. out of the ground. I could seize everything that's, you don't want to, you don't want to be too violent, right? Because you burn all the buildings and you burn the oil wells, you do some damage. But, but ultimately, there's a lot of stuff that still might be left, depending upon how difficult the war was. But if I invade a company, I'm not country. I'm not getting any of the Bitcoin. There's 100%. no point in going to war. Right? I'm always so I'm always telling my sons, don't let me don't let me die all of a sudden. I'll die with my keys, and you'll never inherit the Bitcoin I have. You know, make sure I, when I walk, I don't let me get hit by a bus. Make sure, guys, your dad lives a long and healthy life, long enough to hand you down my passphrase and my keys. Isn't it interesting? Because it used to be the Egyptian pharaohs. They wanted to be buried with their gold, <laughs> but you bury them with their gold and then the tomb they all get looted. steal the gold. Always, always. Right? Looted. You, there's this phrase, you can't take it with you. That's true of everything on earth except Bitcoin. <laughs> you can leave it on the blockchain forever. Yeah, I mean, you could, if you die with your keys, then you've made a contribution to all the other Bitcoiners. Mm -hmm. So That's true. you've made a humanitarian contribution yeah. to everybody that true. was on, in your tribe. And so that's sort true. of good. I think that the, here's the big idea. Bitcoin is property rights. It's, it's technology to deliver property rights to 8 billion people for the first time in the history of the human race. And that's, I mean, life, liberty, and property. That's what John Locke was all about, mm -hmm. property rights. And people diminish property rights saying, well, they don't matter. Well, they sort of do because if I can steal your life's work from you like that, what was your life worth? I mean, it's completely and utterly demoralizing, right? You've, you've stolen someone's sovereignty and their freedom and their liberty. So property rights does matter. And then, and then the half the world do doesn't have any hope of accumulating property. And the other half has property at risk. And Bitcoin is technology that gives you back a right to your own personal sovereignty and your own property.